Angus, there was a feeling that uh, Ken Barton had to go. Uh, the report was fairly scathing of his r role in all of this. Why did he hang on for so long? Good morning, Paul. It's, it's a fair question to ask. There was a, certainly a sense of inevitability about his resignation, given the, the scale of the criticism in in the report, and, and the report came out last Tuesday, so he's, he's hung on, he's clung on, you could argue, to his job for almost a week. And um, the, in the statement today, uh, Chairman Helen Kuhn uh, said that Mr. Barton had always put the interests of Crown first, so uh, obviously they were, they were still assessing his position as, as recently as Friday, but the, 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 it was really, there was very little alternative for, for Ken Barton, g given the, the regulator himself in New South Wales, which is o overseeing um, you know, the, the potentially the uh, Crown's new casino in Sydney had, had already asked that, for Barton to leave. So there was really not much that Ken Barton could do otherwise. And now it falls to the chairman, Helen Coonan, to really to take Crown out of this crisis. It's, it's, she takes over executive responsibilities, and it's up to her to assemble a new board, uh, lead Crown's reform agenda, uh, and some way get it into a position where it might be considered to, to be able to open this new Sydney casino that it's already built. Yeah, I was going to say, because the report itself recommends an overhaul of Crown's management, governance and culture, right? So is this just the beginning? Is the CEO's departure just the beginning of a major overhaul? And what could we expect? I think that's a fair way of looking at it. We've, we've already had uh, three directors leave the board last week. Ken Barton has, has left today. Uh, and it's, it's, I mean, it's not just a, a board overhaul that Crown needs to do. It's, it's, been, it's been really tasked with changing its, its culture, its governance, its controls, the, the way it oversees risk, uh, money laundering risks at its operation. And it's not even just the New South Wales regulator it has to deal with. Its, its flagship casino remains its Melbourne one, and it has another one in Perth in Western Australia. And regulators there who are responsible for the those respective casinos are also looking at the New South Wales report and wondering, you know, what's the fallout there for our operations in, in our states. So it's it's really under assault, Crown Resorts, from all sides, and, and all the regulators that oversee all its operations are looking at this report and wondering what do we have to do to make sure Crown is compliant here. So it has a huge job ahead of it, and, and there's no real sign of when it's going to get its its, uh, its its game together, you know, anytime soon. So it has a long path of reform ahead of it. Yeah, Angus, uh, in that regard, just quickly, we now have a very large, very empty building on the Sydney waterfront. Is there any sense of when uh, that casino may be able to begin trading? It's, it, it's gaming floors aren't in operation. They've been on hold since December. They were due to start in December. You remember, Paul? I mean, at, at least its retail operations are still operating. So it's, it's a hotel, it's luxury apartments, it's restaurants. You know, COVID permitting, they're still up and running. Um, but it, 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 there's no real sign that they can turn this thing around fast. You know, we've, we, we've seen reports from uh, brokers and analysts just last week saying this could be a, perhaps a year or even longer before it gets back on its feet. So, it's, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's not a short-term fix.